Okay, I would like to tr introduce Stephen Helfand right now, and uh, uh, the title of his talk is A Somatic PyRNA Pathway in the Drosophila Fat Body Ensures Metabolic Homeostasis and Normal Lifespan. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the organizing committee very much for the opportunity uh, to talk at the chromatin and epigenetics session. And uh, the work that I'm going to be talking about today, it's largely been done by graduate student uh, Brian Jones in my laboratory. Well, we became interested, we've primarily been interested in aging, and, and one of the things that we've noticed, well, here in this first slide, is that we know that, if I can get this to, oh, sorry. Does this, okay. On the first slide, I just wanted to show that there are two particularly well-known uh, small RNA pathways, both the siRNA pathway and the pyRNA pathway, important in repressing transposable elements. It's primarily thought that the pyRNA pathway is working in the germline of the gonadal tissue. And uh, during the course of some of our studies, Brian Jones noticed that when we were looking at different uh, tissue types, head, thorax, eviscerated abdomen, which is primarily fat body, he noticed that the um, RNAs from uh, the, both the primary and the secondary pathway were fairly highly enriched for the fat body, but not for the other tissues. And of course, the gonads were it's very highly enriched. This led him to consider the possibility that the somatic, uh, that in this somatic tissue, the fat body, perhaps the pyrna cystium pathway is in fact active. And he pursued the next uh, several experiments to demonstrate this. First, he demonstrated that PWE itself can be found in the fat body. In the center here, we see uh, fat body staining of, uh, PWE staining of the fat body nucleus. Um, he then went to show that using immunoblots, in fact, there is fat body, sta there is staining of uh, presence of PWE in the uh, fat body. So now we knew that there are many of these genes are being expressed in the fat body, in the adult fat body, that uh, PWE is, can be found in the uh, adult fat body. And uh, we then asked the question of uh, pi RNAs. So we can see that if we look at small, total small RNAs, and in this case, uh, these are oxidized library in which we look at those that are those small RNAs that are methylated at the three terminal end. Those are the ones that tend to be loaded into the pi RNA argonite path complex. And in this case, there are quite a number of 23 to 29 nucleotide and, uh, nucle uh, small RNAs, and the idea was that perhaps we see pi RNAs being made. When we map these small RNAs, excluding the microRNAs and excluding rDNA, we see about almost 50% of these are mapping to transposable elements. And then on the farther parts of the slide, you can see that most of these, or majority of these uh, mapping, are in fact mapping in an antisense manner. If we, if we then look at another canonical feature of pi RNAs, which is a uh, first position uracil in an antisense direction, we see that that's present as well. We also examined, in addition to Drosophila, we looked at uh, um, simulans in Yucuba, I'm sorry, in addition to Melanogaster, we looked at simulans in Yucuba and found these same features. So that we are seeing a pi RNA type pathway present in the adult fat body in all of these different species. So what are the consequences of this pathway? What is the function of this pathway? And the first thing we did was we knocked down PeeWee. So when we knock down PeeWee, one of the things we see in the fat body is this dramatic increase on the left-hand side here of, the, uh, of expression of uh, RNA from tr various transposable elements. So they're dramatically increased in the fat body. And on the right side of this portion here, we see that consequently there's a decrease in the pi RNAs that are mapping these particular um, transposable elements. So the peewee mutant has increased transposable element expression and a decreased in the pi RNA expression. If we look at the peewee mutant again, and at specifically more, more specifically or selectively at the pi RNAs, we see that the total small RNAs uh, from 23 to 29 nucleotide lengths are slightly decreased, about 28%, as you can see. Those that are mapping to the transposable elements are much more dramatically decreased, about 70, 71% of the pi RNAs mapping to transposable lens are lost in a PeeWee mutant. And finally, at, you can see at the bottom here, the other aspect of at least the primary um, pi RNA pathway is that it's associated with also pi RNAs that are coming from or related to three prime UTRs mapping from normal coding genes. And we see those as well being decreased. So when we knock down PeeWee, the question is where were or are these pi RNAs coming from? If we look at the different um, 
clusters that are known in the pyRNA pathway. Uh, you can see that primarily uh, these must have been coming from the uh, flamenco locus because in the presence of PUE, we see very little uh, presence of the uh, flamenco locus, whereas you can see it present in the active normal uh, fat body cells. And on the right-hand side, let me get this to work at all, okay. On the right-hand side, you can see that there's a complete loss from wild type to heterozygous, and then the bottom, the PUE itself has no um, flamenco locus related uh, um, binding to that region. So we now knew that there is an active system. And finally, in this portion of uh, the pyranase, the, uh, there's a pyranase that are associated, as I mentioned, with uh, coding genes. And one of the ones that's primarily uh, recognized is the, is the uh, traffic jam gene. And on the left, you can see in that the three prime UTRs, there's many mapping from both the wild type and the peewee heterozygous, and virtually none are present in the peewee knockout when we extract this RNA from the uh, fat body. And on the right, you can see them across the, the actual gene coding region itself, and they're associated with the three prime UTR, and they're completely lost. So we now knew that in a peewee mutant, there's an increase in transposable elements, there's a loss of the pi RNAs, and is there a consequence to any in transposable element expression be, uh, at mobilization? So we now utilized a approach from um, Josh Dubnow of Cold Spring Harbor who developed this gypsy trap assay. And in the gypsy trap assay, it's set up so that when a gypsy, an endogenous gypsy jumps into the ovo binding region here, this target, it will inactivate GAL80, and that will lead to the expression of GFP. And with, in this case, if you see on the left here, it's about a five-day-old peewee knockout mutant, and we see very little to any green stain. These are live animals, so we're capable of visualizing, counting, and uh, quantifying in living animals in a longitudinal manner. So we can look at the same animal or group of animals over time. And here on the right, you can see by day 10 in a peewee mutant, there are hundreds to thousands of jumps that have taken place. When we open them up, you can see the cells themselves on the bottom there. Now we know that this is likely to be a true jump because if we use the uh, ovo region that Josh made that is mutated so that gypsies shouldn't be able to jump into it, we see no green fluorescent proteins at all, uh, cells. So we can then go in and count individual cells in individual flies, and we quantified this by three different criteria or uh, systems. One is we said a low was just less than 20 cells, a medium is 20 to 50, and a higher level was between 100 and higher. And as you can see in the left-hand side here, the heterozygote peewee mutant, at, by about day 10 or so, you only see about 1% that have 100 or more, and only up to about 16% that have more than 10 or 20 cells that are positive. But with the peewee mutant, there's a great deal of number. Over 50% of them are greater than 100, 100 or more cells present. What are the consequences of this? So one of the consequences that we looked at is the question of is there any increase in double-stranded breaks? And in fact, there is. And so the bottom is the peewee. Um, this is using gamma H2AV. And you can see on the graph on the right that there's a, about a 40% or more increase in the amount of double-stranded breaks that we see in peewee knockout flies. Again, these are sections of uh, adult uh, abdomen fat body cells. And we also see this with, with flamenco as well. So both peewee knockouts and flamenco knockouts lead to an increase in double-stranded breaks. Consequences to the animal that we've gone through. So the fat body is primarily important in both in storing lipids and storing glycogen. It serves as the liver as well as the adipocytes, and in a moment I'll also show in the immune system. So in a peewee mutant, about day 10 or so, it's beginning to lose its ability to store its lipids. And on the left, you can see that the size of the lipid droplets that's quantitated in the middle and then further on the right-hand side shows that there's a smaller uh, um, size in the lipid droplets in these mutations, in, the, in peewee. And if you measure the total amount of trioxoglycerides on the left or glycogen on the right, you see that they also have lost their amount of their storage metabolites. That also leads to the consequence on the left where we take the flies and we look at their starvation resistance. So the peewee mutants are not particularly resistant to starvation. And with regards to the immunocompetence of the animal, and 
they're also lost in that if we infect them with a bacterial uh, infection, they, they, they die a lot sooner. So this leads to both resistance to starvation and bacterial infection is what the peewee system may be normally doing, and when we remove it, we see these various consequences. And finally, um, since we mostly work on lifespans, we looked at the lifespans and we can see that there's a dramatic loss in both the peewee mutant and the uh, flamenco mutant in lifespan. Okay. So what I tried to tell you about today is that the fat body actually has components of all the active, all the active components for a pyranase. It has the pathway, the genes are present, they're enriched in the adult fat body. The protein is found in the fat body, at least the peewee protein, by immunofluorescence, by immunoblotting. When we look for the oxidized or the loaded pyranase, they are present. They're present in the antisense with the first uracil bias that's expected for pyranase, an active pyranase system. And uh, the, the results of losing the, py the PUE system in, in this animal lead to a decrease in the pyranase to transposable bonds, an increase in transposable bond expression, an increase in mobilization in the fat body, an increase in double-stranded breaks, decrease in lipid size, and various con consequences that lead to a shortened lifespan. So in summary, it appears to us that the pi RNA pathway is present and active in the fat body, and it probably is normally protecting against expression, mobilization, transposable ions, and protects against DNA damage. And an active somatic pi RNA pathway is essential for normal metabolic homeostasis, for immunological function, and overall organismal health. Now again, I promised in the beginning that this work was all done by Brian Jones, and this is Brian, a picture of Brian. And Brian was assisted by several other people in the laboratory. Um, and thank you very much. I'll take any questions. Uh, nice talk. Thanks. I'm struck by the similarities in what you found with what has previously been found in another somatic cell type, the follicle cells. And there it's thought that uh, certain uh, transposons are able to use their location in the follicle cells to get into the germline, you know, during vitellogenesis, and that that has resulted in the, in the response to put the pyRNA system into this other cell type to keep that from happening. And of course, you know that the adult fat body also is a very strong source of yolk proteins. And I wonder if, if you looked or if there's any evidence, and also it's like, like flamenco dependent in both those systems. So are there transposons going from the fat body into the germ cells, and then that has resulted in this result of pi RNA production in the fat body cells? Well, that's a great question, Alan. Uh, we have tried. So there's a couple of things. First of all, it is the case that the fat body is, comes from the same onlaga as the uh, gonadal tissue, apparently. Although I didn't mention it, but we also see um, the same things in the, uh, in the fat body in, in the head, the uh, paracerebral fat body. And we've been very interested in that uh, idea of exactly what you're saying. We don't know how to measure it yet. And, and in other words, we don't have good techniques that we understand for understanding how something would transfer from the fat body to the ovaries and exactly how to measure it. And Brian is very interested. I'd love to talk to you or anyone else that would like to tell me how to do that better. Quick question. Did, did you only see the gypsy hops in the fat body in the adult, or did you see it in other tissues as well? Okay. Um, so it's been reported by, and one of the previous speakers mentioned, uh, Josh Dubnow has, says that it happens in the nervous system. But I must tell you that we've had trouble seeing it in the nervous system, because um, we tried to capitulate some of his work. And I, I didn't describe the work that, that was done actually by myself on normal fat body, normal animals. And they have, in the fat bodies, we see gypsy. We have not looked at other tissues besides a little bit of the nervous system and in the fat body. Um, it does also seem as though that in this particular strain, uh, when we remove peewee, uh, gypsy goes up about 50-fold in its expression. Um, this is a dramatic effect, and we were really excited about it. Yeah, so, yes. Quick technical question. Um, for the knockdown experiments, were those specific to fat body or for the organism as a whole? In, in this case, it was, it was com the, the whole knockout. It was a, a zygotic germline knockout. Of and so then the question, anyway, yeah. Here. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
you, you said that loss of peewee uh, leads to in elevated flamingo at black. Could you just get a little closer? Sorry. Uh, you said that loss of peewee leads to elevated level of flamingo, right? I'm Should still I having that? a little trouble. It's maybe an age effect on my case. But, uh, yeah, you see that loss <laughs> of peewee leads to elevated level of flamingo? Of the last word? Flamingo. One at a time. Okay. Flamingo. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, I, I didn't say. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Um, n loss of peewee does not, we, we, I don't think, well, f doesn't lead to increased flamingo that I know of. Is that your question? The actual, it, it, loss of peewee leads to a loss of pyrenees coming from the flamingo locus. Okay. So, I thought that would lead to, because I, I was having a problem in understanding why loss of Peewee would phenocopies flamingo knock out because I'm thinking that should be opposite effect. Well, I think that if you knock out the flamingo, so, and, and Alan started to raise the question, the big debate in the lab is this the primary system or the secondary system? And, and Brian is sure that it's the primary system. And I keep saying, I really don't care. As long as you can show the primary system is active, I'm happy enough. So we always argue about that. So, the, it looks like the evidence, and I haven't presented some of the other evidence he has, that suggests that it is more the primary or the somatic ovarian type system that we're seeing. And that tends to be um, uh, things that are coming from flamenco locus. So the idea, at least my perspective, would be that if you knock out peewee, then it doesn't work. And if you lack out flamenco, then you're losing most of the pyrenees that could be loaded into peewee, so it still doesn't work, so it should phenocopy, at least as far as I understand. Thanks. But thank you very much. We're wrapping this up. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I guess uh, I'd like to thank all the speakers and all the participants for a great session. And uh, onward and forward. Thank you.